Hey, it's Joe Launchman Automator, and in this video, I'm going to talk through some of the ways you can improve the likelihood of getting help. And so, uh, we were chatting with some of the heroes, this link above me here if you're interested. So, the Auto Hockey Heroes group, we have a private Telegram group where we go in and people can ask questions. And we have also have weekly calls um, on Fridays and hopefully Saturdays. It, you know, people can post their questions there. And what I notice is, you know, People are different levels of experience. We all are, right? There's no, you know, harm, no foul, right? Where I'm just saying, look, whether you're doing it in the Telegram group or out on Google and to auto hockey forums or the auto hockey subreddit or wherever you are, we want to make sure that you ask a question in a certain way to, if you do, you're much more likely to get an answer to that question. So I'm going to cover some of the things you can do to increase the likelihood that someone will actually help you. So that's what this video is about. Stick to the end because we've got lots of good tips. So let's jump into it here. Uh, my high tech feeling here. Oh, don't you love that? Um, so the first bullet point is a short first long questions, right? So I forget who told me this, but um, the statement is, look, a short question requires a long answer and a long question requires a short answer. So it may take you more time to write out your question because it's going to take you the, the more time you put into it, it. It does look longer stuff. However, for people answering it, it's so much easier because you provided the context and the relevance. We understand what's going on. We know exactly what you're asking. And without knowing that, we, we have to go, well, what do you mean this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And it becomes very time consuming and very confusing depending on the, the channel and where you're doing it. So spend more time up front asking a very precise question. Think exactly about it. Think about your wording. Use a word processor if you can, you know, brush up in your grammar a little. Make sure that you're focused, right? Because it, it really makes a difference and, and that it, it is important. So number two, compartmentalize your code. Right, so some people will say, hey, I'm having problems with this, and they go to get help, and they post a 2,000 line code, right? Take the problem that you have and put it in as short a code as you can, so compartmentalize it and bringing it into a new script. This is actually a really good debugging tip because often when you do that, you'll realize it starts working, and it really isn't that you have a problem overall. It's how you have a problem with maybe with scope or something, right, with, with the environment you're doing it in. So pulling it out and putting it in its own, it also helps shorten it down for people trying to help you so we know exactly what you're trying to get help on and what's working. Some people will post stuff and say, hey, if this, they'll quote literally say, this doesn't work. But we're like, well, there's a lot of code here, right? What doesn't work? Oh, the variable, well, which variable? Which line are you talking about? So make sure you compartmentalize it, put it in there, which actually leads into the next one. Share everything that's needed, right? If you're including functions, you know, in your code, make sure you include those functions because often you might have an include and not have it right there, but then someone goes to test it on their end. And if they can't test it, how do we debug it? Right? So if you're, if you're including functions, if you have other things that we need a reference to, try to include them, do your best you can, or create a constant, you know, just create a value. If you were using an input variable, you don't have to have it go read from a web page that's hidden, just shove in a value that makes sense that we can play with. Right? All right. Let's see. Number four, uh, document your environment. So mention the bitness of auto hockey, meaning like 64 bit versus 32 bit. Are you using version one or version two? Also, I would say is even the, the down to like 1.2.3, if you double click on a system on a running icon in the system tray, you'll see the version that you're currently running. And the first thing I would say is regardless of the bitness and um, I also used to mention the, uh, you know, ANSI versus UTF-8 version, the encoding, um, I recommend using the UTF-8 version, but um, I definitely wouldn't be using the ANSI anymore. And I use the 32-bit, but a lot of people like the 64-bit. It, it really, to me, depends on the libraries out there and what you're connecting to. And some, like, com objects aren't available in 64-bit, while other ones are. And also the version 1 versus version 2. There's a lot more code examples out there in version 1 than version 2. But some of the new functionality is in version 2 only. But just make sure you document that in your code and you explain it because... We might be trying something and it works for us, but it doesn't work for you because you're using the ANSI version, right? So it's always one of those things. And also make sure you understand the file format you're saving your files in. It's one of the things that catches a lot of people that are new to programming. If you're not using a code, if you're using like Notepad and it's saving in an ANSI file, you're trying to use emojis, you know, you have to do it a very certain way or just level up and use like a UTF-8 type uh, encoding format for your files. All right. Um, explain your goals too. So at this point, um, I can't emphasize enough because often people will say, hey, I have this code and it's not working and we'll look at it and 
you know, like I said, we're all at different levels. There's nothing wrong with that of what we're doing. But some people will try to do something in their approach. Like it's so not the way that we think we don't understand what it is that your code is even trying to do. So annotate your code, put it to the right of it or above it, say, this is what this line does, you know, and this is where, and also make sure you know, this is where it's breaking, right? Because a lot of people, again, submit a lot of code, but they don't, they'll tell you somewhere else, oh, it's where I set a variable, but that's actually in a lot of places. How do we know? Well, annotate right next to it. This is where it is. And even say, this is what I'm expecting here. And this is what not coming back. Very helpful. The more that you actually do this one is you'll actually troubleshoot on your own doing this and you'll fix it before you even post the question. But two is people like us that are trying to help you. We're much more likely to try to help you because we've seen you've done some diligence. You've done some work to try to figure it out, but also you've made it easy for us. I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> I love this one. Screenshots suck. Um, so people will post pictures of their code and I get it, it's easy and it sort of looks better, but if you can post it like in a gist or use a paste bin or something to keep that file formatting, the, the IntelliSense and, and stuff, that, that would make it better. Uh, but the, the problem is when you post an image of it and then you want someone to fix it, we literally have to type all that out, right? And it's, it's you know, I mean, some of us have OCR tools that can do that very quickly, like my window snipping tool, but that's a lot to ask where someone's trying to help you. And so try to stay away, unless it's super, super simple, stay away from the image posting um, of your code because it's just it's just a pain. So, um, and Google is your friend, right? The first thing I would say is before you actually ask for a po uh, um, support, Google, you know, your, what you're looking for, look in the auto hockey forum. This, this is where I always look, the auto hockey forum, the auto hockey subreddit and stack overflow. And depending on your level, um, you probably know this if you're a little more advanced on Stack Overflow. You can limit your search to just auto hockey code, but what I do is I don't do that. I search more for a broader and even like VBA or JavaScript. And often you can see how other people solved it in those languages and adapt it. You might first search for it just as auto hockey. And then if you can't find it, then remove that and look for it in, in general. But yeah, um, searching is really, really um great way to help you know solve the problem before it's a problem right so so get help yourself before you ask others to help you so i hope that helps again if you're watching this and you're in the telegram group that's awesome I'm, I'm just trying to give us some tips of going along um trying to paste your code you know put it in there and help us help you right so um i hope that's it and uh keep going keep learning it's worth it trust me it, and here's the other thing i really wanted to emphasize is if you're working in, in anything you're doing, right? Auto hockey is what we typically talk about, but it's anything. And you're feeling uncomfortable and anxious and stressed. That's a part of learning, right? We all feel that way. We all get that way when we're working in something that we're not familiar with. It's this feeling we all know and understand, this unease. That's normal, right? We've all been there. We all started at the same spot and we all had to learn, right? And just, you'll, you'll meet someone who seems to pick up stuff right away, but you don't understand they, they've probably programmed another language or something. And for them, it's really easy to pick up on adapt it. So don't get hung up on the fact that like, Ooh, I'm getting stressed out. Oh, I just, I'm terrible at this. I'm going to give up. No, keep at it. Trust me. The other thing I, I tell my wife a lot when we play, we were into star Wars uh, battlefront on, on Xbox and we'll play a lot. And she agrees to what we'll, we'll be playing some people and they're really, um, they're not good. And then we can, we just trash them and we're like, it's not even fun. Right? Like, but then we'll play people that are really, really, um, hackers basically. And we get our butts handed to us and that's not fun either, but when it's really hard, but we win, we can try hard. That's when you get that achievement and it's really, really fun. And it's a great feeling. It's the same thing with coding, right? When you work at something really hard and you keep trying to learn it and you keep working at it, and then you finally get it, that feeling of accomplishment is just awesome. And so trust me, this is worth it. Stick with it. Uh, we have lots of courses, uh, or, you know, in how to help learn. And if you're new to auto hockey, you know, that hero program we have, it's for all levels, right? So it's, uh, we have intermediate, we have beginning, we have advanced, um, we're all there helping each other. So it'd be another place if you're interested, there's, there's a cost. So check it out, but, um, it's well worth it. And, uh, people are learning a lot of stuff. So I hope that helps. Cheers.